Welcome to iLecture Online. Here's our first example of how to use the Euler equation method to solve second order differential equations that do not have constant coefficients. We're simply going to start out with the homogeneous type first, so we're only finding the homogeneous solution to this equation. We're going to assume, since this is an Euler equation, that, and again, the reason we can tell that there's a t square in front of y double prime, a t to the first power in front of y prime, and just a constant in front of the y term. And so that's how we know that we have this type of equation, the Euler equation. And the general form of the solution is going to take on this form right here, y equals t raised to the r power. And we're going to assume at this point that r is greater than zero. Well, r can be less than zero as well, but if it's less than zero, we need to make sure we take the absolute value sign of it when we have the natural log in our solution. And you'll see that in just a moment. I believe that this may have some negative r solutions as well. So, we'll see. Well, first of all, we want to put this into the standard format. So, we're going to divide everything by the coefficient in front of the y double prime term. So, this becomes y double prime plus 2t divided by t squared, which is 2 over t times y prime, minus 12 over t squared times y equals 0. And knowing that the general solution will look like this, then we know that y prime will be equal to r times t to the r minus 1, and y double prime will be r times r minus 1 times t to the r minus 2. If we then take these and substitute those into this equation, let's see what we get. So first of all, for the y double prime, nothing changes. So this will be, oh no, I'm sorry. Something will change because we have to replace that. So we end up with r times r minus 1 times t raised to the r minus 2 plus 2 over t times y prime, which is r times t to the r minus 1, and then minus 12 over t squared, and y would be simply t raised to the r power, and that will be equal to 0. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by t squared. So we're going to multiply everything by t squared, like this. When we do that, we multiply this time t squared, that gives us t to the r power, so we have r, and I can multiply this out, so this is r squared minus r times t to the r power, and here this becomes plus 2 r times t to the r power, and this becomes minus 12 t to the r power, because this t squared will cancel out that t squared, and that equals 0. We now see that we can factor out a t to the r, and what we have left is an r squared, a minus r, a plus 2r, and a minus 12, and that equals 0. And simplifying this, we end up with t to the r times r squared plus r minus 12 equals 0. And we're assuming that t here, t to the r, will not equal 0. Next, we're going to solve this as a quadratic equation because we know that for the left side equals 0, what's in the brackets here must equal 0. We can factor that, so this can be written as r plus 4 times r minus 3 is equal to 0 because 4 times a negative 3 is minus 12. Add these together, you get plus 1, which means that r1 is equal to negative 4 and r2 is equal to 3. So in this case, we do have one of the roots being negative and one of them being positive. Now we have to be careful when we're dealing with the natural log here. But since they're both real roots, we know that the solution to the homogeneous part of the equation will look as follows. We know that y is going to be equal to c1 times t to the r1 power plus c2 t to the r2 power. Okay. And then since we know what the values of r are, we then know that y is equal to c1 t to the negative 4 power plus c2 t to the positive 3 power. And this here is the solution to the homogeneous part 
of the equations. I probably want to put some age there to indicate that this is only the solution to the homogeneous part of the equation. And once we put in a non-homogeneous equation, of course, we'll have to show you how to find the rest of the solution, the particular part of the solution. But at this point, again, what we're interested in is learning how to find the homogeneous part of the solution if we have non-constant coefficients and we then recognize that there's different types of equations that will then utilize different types of solutions. In this case, this equation is known as the Euler equation, which means we solve it as far as we have seen here on the board. And that's how it's done.